Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933 here, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at the Swiss, Cisco Swiss Army Knife Command Set. And you may be thinking, what iOS is that in, or more likely has Chris totally lost his sanity? That may well be true, but what we're going to do here is look at a collection of keystrokes uh, that a student actually came up with this term uh, in email, and we talked about how when you're starting, especially with your CCNA studies, you're hit with all these different keystroke combinations. And some you're going to use certainly more often than not in the real world. So we're going to look at four of those here in action, as always, on real Cisco routers and switches. We're going to talk about these four things, when you would need to do them in the real world. And also, of course, uh, I will tell you the keystroke, because that's the one thing I can't show you. I can show you the action that it takes, but you obviously can't see the actual keystroke that I'm using. So we're going to look at all four of these in action, again, on real equipment. And let's go ahead and bring our pod up. And we're on router one right now, and what I'm going to do is send a ping to an address that I cannot possibly ping from this router right now. And this is something I thought about you know, when I first heard about this particular keystroke that we're going to talk about. If you send a ping and you mistype the address or you're pinging an address that you, you realize that you can't reach, you know, what's the big deal in waiting 10 seconds, right? Because we know from our previous studies that the default timeout for our ping is two seconds. We see it on, that on the screen here as well. And we sent out five packets, as you can see right here. So what's the big deal in waiting 10 seconds? Probably none, but sometimes your pings aren't going to just take 10 seconds, especially if you're working with what we call an extended ping. If you're not familiar with that, do a quick search on YouTube on ping, and I've got a video up about the extended ping. But one of the things we can do with an extended ping is name the number of packets we want to go out. So let's just say that we're doing some testing here and we send out 1,000 packets. So we're just going to take the rest of the defaults and keep hitting yes there. And you can see at the bottom we're sending 1,100 byte ICMP echoes to that address and the timeout is two seconds. Well that's going to be 2,000 seconds before it's done. And maybe at this point you realize, oh, you know, I really meant to ping a 2111. So you better know how to terminate those. The same goes for a trace route. Because if you send out a trace route to an address that you can't possibly trace, you're going to get 30 very slow rows of asterisks. So you better know that to terminate that, it's Control Shift 6 twice. You just do one right after the other. So that way, we only had to watch 17 packets timeout instead of 1,000 packets timeout. So again, that works for a trace route as well. And let me bring that up on the uh, screen here. We talked about why you would do that. Again, if you're terminating a ping, a regular ping, it's five packets going out every two seconds. It's no big deal to wait on that. But again, I think you'll agree with me, you don't want to wait 2,000 seconds for that ping that we just sent via the extended ping to timeout. So again, that's Control Shift 6 twice. So that's one good command to know. And how do we get out of setup mode? Again, if you're not familiar with setup mode or you want to see it in action, I do have a YouTube video out on that as well. But let's go over to a switch that I did a write erase on and a reload before I started this recording. And you can see we're being prompted, you know, do you want to enter the initial configuration dialog? I'm going to say yes. And here's where it asks, you know, do you want to go into basic management setup? Sure, I'll do that. And then you go in here and you think, okay, I'll do that. And, well, I don't really want to put an enable secret password in, so I'll try to get around it, and I can't. So I have to enter one, and now I've got to put an enable password, etc. I'm not against putting these passwords on, but many network admins find using setup mode to set up a router or switch to be cumbersome at best. So you'll notice if you, if you look very quickly, the screen did tell us earlier what the keystroke is, because for pings and trace routes, it just says what? You know, type escape sequence to abort, but it doesn't say what the escape sequence is. You could have seen it earlier, but in case you didn't, it is control C. And what you'll see when you do that is you'll get this message at the bottom of the screen, configuration aborted, no changes made, press return to get started, and it's going to put you right at user exec mode, and anything you entered, whether you entered one value or 100 values, it's all gone. So that is, again, a very handy keystroke to know because it's easy to miss it. And let's bring that one up again to get out of that setup mode 
you use control C. Now you might have seen those in other studies, but what about this repeating previous commands? Why would I even want to do that? Well, I'll show you one reason you might want to do it. Let's hop back up to our router and let's just put an IP address here on Ethernet 0. I'll make that 101. And you enter that and you go, you know, I meant to put uh, something else. I meant to put IP address 101 or I don't want an IP address at all. What you can do, and you could just type in no IP address, but a lot of people don't even like to type that much, and that's fine. What you can do is use your up arrow to start going through your command history, and that appeared on the screen when I hit the up arrow one time. And you'll see if I hit it again, the previous command I entered, enter, uh, int E0 appears, and then WR, which I did before we got started with this recording. So you can do that, again, if you want to toggle through it, you can use the up arrow and then the down arrow, of course, if you zoom past what you wanted to repeat. Now, that's one way to do it, but if you wanted to take this IP address off, obviously just entering it again is not going to do the trick. So what you want to do is hit your up arrow and then hit control A. I'm not crazy about trying to memorize every single keystroke you can use to move the cursor, you know, one space forward, one space backwards, that kind of thing. If you want to do that for the exam and if you use that in the real world, that's great. But one I really like to use is control A and you can see the cursor go straight to the front of the line and then you can just type the word no in front of it because as I often say 99 out of 100 times there's always an exception but 99 out of 100 times to negate a command on a Cisco device you just need to repeat the command and put the word no in front of it so using that up arrow down arrow to go through your command history and then using control A to move to the front of that line and just type no in that really does come in handy that's one you can use in the real world as well so let's show that one again. Repeating previous commands, you just use your up and down arrow to go through your history. And then to move to the front of that command from there, you're going to use Control A. Now let's zoom back to that suspending a telnet and reverse telnet session. Uh, I know you're taught a couple of keystrokes when it comes to telnet, different commands you can use to manage telnet connections. But a lot of times you just make a telnet connection, you do what you need to do, and you get out. But that's not what we do on this particular device that we're on right now with that Bry ADV5 prompt. That's an access server. And even if you do not have a Cisco Home Lab, uh, do a YouTube search on access server. I've got two videos there that I really think you should watch. Good commands to know for the exam. But you'll also notice now that when I go back to router 1, I'm not typing in R1 or Telnet R1 or anything like that. I'm just hitting the number 1 and then hitting enter and it's going to say resuming connection one then I tap enter again and I'm right back at router one what I just did there was resume an open telnet session and to suspend it to go back to the access server that's the one I really want to show you here and because I get asked a lot of that in my videos it's like well how do you go from router one back out to the access server at that point you are suspending a telnet session and there are two keystrokes for that, and I hesitate to call the second one a keystroke. You're going to do Control Shift 6 again, and then the letter X. So if I go back out to Router 1, I just tap, uh, hit 1, tap it twice, and I'm back there. But now to suspend that connection and go back to the access server, it's simply Control Shift 6 and then X. That is two separate keystrokes, and on occasion, uh, I'll have a student email and say, is there any other way to do that? Because it's a little tricky at first, I certainly grant you that, but once you practice it a couple times, you just end up doing it unconsciously. Uh, you don't even think about it. So again, those are four really good commands for you to know, not only for your NA and NP exams, but for the real world as well. Hope you enjoyed our little Cisco Swiss Army Knife command set video here. I'm Chris Brandt, CCIE number 12933. Be sure to check out our other videos on YouTube, and we'll see you there.